اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اوكي اي ام لايك يا ذس از ماي لايك جيت اوت يو نو لايك ايفري تايم دي هاف كويشن ام لايك لوك دي لايك نو واي بت اني واي अपने देसी बंदे ओए होए वो तो वो तो परेशान हो जाते हो कि नो वे मैं क्या यार परेशान हो गया हूं छोड़ो यार देसी हां मैं दो दिन हुए इधर कल हमने चले जाना है नहीं यार हां यार जरा सैर सूर भी किया कि नहीं कुछ नहीं रिसर्च ऑन व्हाट हैपेंड आफ्टर माय लाइफ दीस आर केसेस लुक एट दिस केस इट्स बेटर बाय वेरी स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड आई एम जस्ट गोना just want to give you an example 11 year old pakistani muslim what happened they called me a pakistani bitch they called my dad osama did you report it no why not cuz it would made me it would make it worse this is what things were happening at the time okay little girls they took off their scarves they don't wear scarves no more yeah you, you wouldn't believe they made fun of my religion and culture and where i came from did you report it i told the school dean she did nothing um have things changed after 911 it made me scared to go to school how old she 13 year old girl this is what was going on this became a report uh, that's what i'm like what, so which subject you're working on mm-hmm. i have everything on it yeah. i have this question Yeah. So let's do cuz one step at a time. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how much time you have, but um cuz there's a lot. Yeah, until 2:15. Okay, good, good, good. That's good. Okay, bismillah. Okay, bismillah. Okay. So first of all, I would like you to tell me something about yourself. My name is Mohammad Razvi. I'm the executive director of Council of People's Organization. Um I have five kids and I have three grandkids. And so would you like to tell us uh, about your organization? Yes, so Council of People's Organization was formerly known as Council of Pakistan Organization. Now it's known as COPO. COPO serves the community, majority Muslim community in Brooklyn and New York City. The majority of the people that come to us are from Pakistan and we have been servicing them for almost 18 years now. And we are a one-stop shop from immigration issues to health issues um to education um also to um help the seniors we have the first halal senior center we uh provide our seniors with meals um we also provide seniors with transportation and we provide immigration attorneys to our fellow members all free that's great and so when we talk about the contribution of muslims to united states you see they have been um, serving uh, to america since centuries if you trace the history so how do you see the contribution of muslims in united states and well, their role well the most important thing is many of the muslims that are here and including the pakistanis mm-hmm. they contribute to the united states tremendously mm-hmm. um many of them are doctors mm-hmm. they're helping saving lives many of them are in the police department the first responders were even finding many of them are uh in the fire department who are also first responders and now as we have been working with the community we have engaged our muslim youth to engage even further to work with the FBI secret service homeland security and that's what we have been doing and it is a positive aspect for the community to to be with the system working with the system and that's what we're promoting Okay. And sir, any challenges you see, any difficulties you see Muslims are going through well, living in this country? Well, there are issues all over. It never stops. For example, um after 9/11, um I have a report here that we did with the mayor's office and human rights commission where mes- many Muslims were discriminated against and they were fearful, they were afraid. However, we worked with the community, we worked with the elected officials and we built bridges. we hold iftar dinners with the elected officials 
with the mayor, with the borough presidents, and it has built a bridge between the community and the Muslims. And most importantly, we have been continuing with it. At the moment, when our president, current president, makes uh, statements that are very derogatory or against Muslims, yeah, it causes a problem. As you can see over here on this map, I'm actually tracking hate crimes that happen within not just the United States, but within our communities every time when there's a bad uh, remark made by our wonderful president. And we are tracing that, we're tracking it. Because we have done this before, we have done outreach in our community in Urdu. We have gotten the city agency, especially Commission on Human Rights, to work with us. And we were one of the sites to do the Human Rights Commission um, attorneys on site to help the people. And so what about 2016 presidential election? I mean, um, people have this thing in mind, especially Muslims, that Muslims living in America, they are not being treated well. They are not happily living here. So what your take on it? My take on it is the people who have, ever since the elections, the Muslims that are living here, they are working even harder to make sure that their voices are heard. We are engaging them to become citizens and to put their votes in. Because many times we're finding out our Muslim, especially Pakistanis, they're more involved with politics back at home than they are involved here in America. So they're understanding that. We have attorneys on staff. We've hired attorneys on staff just to make sure every Pakistani, every Muslim becomes a voter registered person, becomes a citizen of the United States, does that so that they can get voice, they can vote, and they can make a change. And that's what we've been emphasizing. Okay. So in general, I mean, what do you think? Muslims, are they generally good people, peace-loving people? They are abiding by the laws or not? Absolutely. They're very good people. They are abiding by the laws. They have been working with the community, and they are making sure everything is on point with their immigration status. Because sometimes that's what our community members, they forget to follow up to make sure their immigration issues are clear. And they have been doing that. Because of working with other community groups, many Pakistani and many Muslims, they actually come when there's a problem with the Christian community, when they have some incident, they will be there supporting them. When there's an issue with the, uh, the Jewish community, they will be there. They are working there. And that's what they're doing. They're working with them. And so what about the crime rates? I mean, uh, when you talk about crime rates among Muslims, it's high or? No, Muslim community does not have that much of a crime rate. I mean, many people are very happy to have a Muslim near them because they're, no, they're, they're not supposed to be stealing and doing bad things. Mm. That's what we have, sir. See. Do you feel, sir, there's any relation between Islam and extremism? Well, the sad part is this, and these are one of the subjects that we actually talk to law enforcement and explain to them. Islam has been hijacked, been taken over by certain individuals who have a certain political view or a certain type of aspect, and they're utilizing that in a way to talk about their political views and we have to stop that and this is a time for Muslims to come together and make sure there is no space for extremism there's no space in our in our Quran it says our Prophet stated so many times if you hurt one human being it's as if you have hurt all humanity and we have to be totally respecting that and try to make sure no one hurts anyone Mr. Mashallah, you are doing very well. So, how, what kind of changes you want to bring in this society, being a Muslim? So, one of the most important things we're doing, being a Muslim, and as I was mentioning, we recently just held this event. It's a Youth Career Day. And it's involving 26 city, state, and federal agencies, from FBI to Secret Service to Homeland Security. We have been working diligently with the community and the leadership and making sure our Muslim youth who are here in the States are part of the system. For example, at this moment, I'm proud to say there's over 1,000 police officers who are Muslim. That is such a great, I'm so happy about that. There are over hundreds of FBI agents who are Muslims and Pakistani, not just Muslim, but Pakistan, who I've personally met. There are so many Homeland Security, TSA agents which are telling, and this is the key, these agents who are Muslim are telling all these agencies, listen, if a person has a shalwar, which is too high, that's not that he's extremist. It's because he's doing the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad. 
if a person all of a sudden during Ramadan has a bigger beard, it's not that he is an extremist. He's just being more religious during that month. These are the things that they're explaining to them. And that's the key. We need to work together to make sure we are all safe. And that's how it happens. Okay. And if some non-Muslims comes with the, this misconception in front of you, I mean, how do you, um, how do you tell him that it's not Islam? If something goes wrong, it should, it should not be associated with Muslims. How do you? So this is the that? toughest thing. One of the things I explain to them is, especially when as a non-Muslim, so when you see a non-Muslim, he comes and he comes to my office and he's asking me about these questions. I tell him, so here's the army base. At the army base, we teach the army base and the FBI agents what Islam is. We have a curriculum on Islam 101. And not only that, the as we teach the curriculum, it's taught about Shias, Sunnis, Wahhabis, Ahmadiyyas, all the different cultural groups and Islamic groups. And then we explain to them, listen, there are so many multiple things in Islam. It's not just one Islam. We have to understand that. And a person who's from Pakistan, from Kashmir area, they use some things different than the Pakistan who's from Lahore. And they're like, oh my God. I'm like, yes, it is not just that simple. Most importantly, the people who are doing the attacks are the ones who are already enemies of Islam. They have nothing to do with Islam because no one is supposed to hurt even one person. And that's the true Islam. That's true. And so what about religious activities? I mean, uh, Muslims here in America, I mean, are they free to perform their uh, religious activities? Are they free to go? And uh, do you feel this society is tolerant enough to accept your values, your tradition, and you as a Muslim? Absolutely. I'm going to show you pictures of iftar dinners we actually hold with community leaders and with elected officials, as I was mentioning earlier. There are so many events that we hold to make sure our community members are involved and these are the iftar dinners that are being held throughout the boroughs. Uh, let's see if I can get you the pictures. All right, this is I'm just showing you. So this is a uh, this is a picture of the community group of Muslims from throughout the community in Brooklyn, different um, Yemeni, Palestinian, um, Bengali, Afghani, Pakistan, um, Albanian, Yugoslavian, all Muslims coming together that are part of a team to make iftar dinner at the borough president's home. Also, we do it with Mayor de Blasio. Also, we do it with the Bronx borough president. Also, we do it with uh, the Brooklyn borough, borough president, uh, the Manhattan borough president. Also, we do it with the Staten Island borough president. And this is showing from the perspective from other communities and elected officials, yes, we want the Muslim community. We want to break bread together. We want to eat together with them. And that's the difference we're able to make. And you see, sir, you are um, uh, serving people. I mean, you are doing so much. So how do you manage to get, I mean, um, money and, you know? Hmm, good question. That's a real good question. You say it so quietly. <laughs> so Funds. one of the most important things what we are able to do is we are working with our community leaders who actually help to support us. They donate. They donate because they realize this is not a masjid. Hmm. We do not accept sadaqa. We do not accept zakat because this is not a mosque. Okay. I do not want to take a chance of taking some funds which belong to the needy and so forth. God forbid that, you know, God is, when I go... When I die, God's going to ask me, why, why did you, you know, what's up with, why did you take that money? So the people understand that, the businesses understand that, the community leaders. They're the ones who help support us. And then we also work with other community and foundations to help support the community. I mean, here, at this moment, I'm showing to you, this is how many people have come to our office to seek services. There are thousands, there are over 30,000 community members who have come to seek services in our community. And it is from becoming a citizen, to learning English, to getting some immigration help, also just to have their children first time go to college. Those are the services we're providing and we've been helping. And it is the key 
to helping others is how they're understanding that other people do care. And that's what we're doing. And sir, what about hate crimes? I mean, uh, the situation has changed altogether after 9-11 and after 2016. How do you see the situation? So that's one of the reasons why we are holding these uh, meetings, and those are the reasons why we're tracking it. Recently, we have involved our Department of Justice, and we've been holding hate crimes forum. Okay. First time in history it happened in an African-American mosque. This is what we are able to do because we have engaged the system. Mm. Any community who needs assistance, we are able to provide that. And that's what we're able to do to make that change. With the Human Rights Commission, which works on the hate crimes, that's what we were able to do. Hold it in our language, have the attorney in our language, and make sure our community gets that assistance. Mm. So this is the key. It's how to bring people to the table and to work with them. For example, one of the biggest things we did with the largest group is I Am A Muslim Too rally. This was after Trump had issued a ban on Muslims coming back into the country. There were thousands and thousands of people who came to this rally. And it was more non-Muslims than Muslims that came to support us. And that's the most important thing. Even the program that I had in this, it had so many non-Muslim support that was coming to us and as you can see, here's the program. It's from elected officials. Over here you will see elected assembly members, council members, all of them, and then rabbis, reverends, and uh, other reverends, so many other community groups coming in support of the Muslim community. This wouldn't have happened if we hadn't put things in place already. And that's the difference. And so what about Muslims? I mean, do you feel, is there any need for Muslim to um, make their perception better in the eyes of Western world? Absolutely. I think what we are lacking sometimes is in the Muslim community, we need to educate our community members and community leaders more. For example, I've heard many times, many stories that people who come from Pakistan or other countries when they come here, they have a different view. And then all of a sudden, when they stay here for a year or two years, they understand that even a person who used to be a big leader back in Pakistan, here he has to drive a cab or he has to work at a restaurant in order to make a living. That's the reality. You may be a big person back in Pakistan, but when you come to the United States, you are going to be a person who's going to work hard than you ever did before. Because you, that's the only way to make it here. I mean, I myself... I worked at a butcher. I was a butcher. I myself, I drove a cab. I myself, I drove, I did construction work. I did everything. And then uh, at this moment, I'm running this organization. Yeah, it is the largest Muslim South Asian organization in New York State. And if I refer it towards Pakistani, it is the largest and probably in the United States, the largest Pakistani run organization because that's how large we have uh, we have over 35 employees and we have 15 volunteers 15 volunteers 35 employees that help to run this organization that service 15,000 people every year to assist them to help it's all free all the services are here free from my from the attorneys from the services for the seniors from ESL classes computer classes um, from educational uh, programs, from this youth program, everything is free here. Oh, wow. Great. <laughs> okay. And sir, um, I mean, if we talk about youth um, in general, not the youth of uh, America or Pakistan or Yemen or Somalia, in general, what do you say to youth, I mean Muslim youth, what's the way forward for them? How? Uh, the parent, the society, people like you can help them to keep them away from the uh, from the activities like extremism, drugs, and how can we help them? So What's the way forward for them? So the most important thing for the youth, and this is something I've been also telling my children, you have to focus on the next level. Because we, me, my first generation of Muslims that came to this country, or even growing up, they worked hard, they worked hard, but they have enough resources to support the youth. 
the youth needs to take that and take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. They need to be able to utilize the resources that are available to them because sometimes our youth does not understand. They think it's easy. It is not easy. Only because they have received something, only because they're able to drive a, a new car, that doesn't mean that it was easy to get to that point for the parents. But some of our youth, they do lack that understanding. It's unfortunate. I mean, I know of many youths in different uh, countries, like in London, they're on their computers all the time. They don't need to be on the computer. They need to go out and be active in the community. They need to participate. They need to volunteer. The most important thing that a youth can do at this moment is volunteer to another organization. It doesn't matter if it's Muslim or not. I have in my office in front the two people that you're seeing in the front desk. They're African Americans and they're not Muslims. They're volunteering here. Look how beautiful that is. They're Christians and they're volunteering in a Muslim organization and they want to gain experience and they're like, oh my God. And I invited them to this event. They had never seen an event like this. And they are looking towards, wow, this is a Muslim group and this is what they're doing. It's wonderful. Similarly, our Muslim youth should volunteer to other groups. Not necessarily, it doesn't have to be just Muslim groups. You can volunteer at a church. You can do that. Show them what's the sunnah in you because our prophet didn't just help his own people he helped others and i use that as, as an example when people ask me why are you helping all these different people i'm doing the sunnah of our prophet muhammad because i need to help them because when god is going to ask me what did you do for yourself no what did you do for my mankind and i can tell him this is how many people i've helped and that's what we need to do and sir, so, uh, for you, what's an American dream is all about? I already lived it. I was 35 years old. I was already making money. I had five different businesses. I was supposed to, I was supposed to actually retire at the age of 35. Okay. This is my retirement. I actually have Bill Gates' um, news article in my books just to remind me money's not everything. Mm -hmm. Even he had to log off and do charity work and this is what this is for me this is my retirement my american dream my kids have gone to college four of them are graduates one of them is a phd and they've gone to pace university i'm happy i have three grandkids and they're doing great i hope they do better i'm living the american dream i'm here at my office my workers what i this was supposed to be a something temporary this is only supposed to be six months. This organization was a temporary organization. Six months I was going to help the people and that's it. It turned out to be something I had to continue with. And now it's been 17 years. I'm recognized at the 9-11 Museum, the Tribute Center, of one of the eight stories which shows what communities can do and after such horrific attacks. And that's what we're recognized. And I'm humbled. I have a picture of the Pope when I got a chance to meet with him. It's right over there, I'll show okay. it to you. Right. And here, hold on, let me see if this is long enough. Yeah. When I got a chance to meet him. So could you imagine, so I actually was able to meet with him and sit there, I was like, oh my God, I mean, such a wonderful spiritual leader yes. Yes. and the most important thing I can't even explain to you my landlord who's an Italian Christian Baizan I call him it's like a brother well he's an older older brother I was able to get him to invite to come and meet him so just imagine that I mean I, I can't I mean there's no there's no words that I could explain to you you know I sit there I'm like did I really do this I travel on behalf of the government of different countries to build relationship. They request me, how did you do this, Mr. Rosvi? And they request me to go to their countries and show them how to build the relationships, bridge the gaps. There's nothing better than this. I actually go and teach them, this is how I did this. This is how I'm doing this. I went to London, I went to Moscow, I went to France, uh, I went to 
Israel. I went to other countries. Recently, I'm supposed to go to Japan. That's what I'm doing. Great, sir. So you see, you are, mashallah, so successful. Even then, I have this question in my mind. Yes. Have you ever thought that if you were born to another country, in any other country, you would have been more successful, more privileged? Well, I was born in Pakistan. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> if I was raised in any other country, no, I don't think so. This is the country that made it happen. This is the country that's continuously to make it happen. And this is the country where a person who feels he's discriminated has a voice. Nobody can, you know, nobody can suppress that. Regardless, people will stand up and fight for you too. And this is what this country is about. That's why you see such a huge, large American flag behind me, because this is the, this is the flag that keeps us safe. Regardless who's running it, because of the people, it's the people. It's not one person. It's the people who actually say, yes, I'm an American, and I'm part of this. Okay. Take the call. And sir, how do you see the Muslims, um, future of Muslims here in America? Okay. So the most important thing, the future I am seeing because more and more Muslims are getting involved into city-state agencies, into elections, I see a great future. I mean, prior to 9-11, we were not that involved. After 9-11, many Muslim leaders, Muslim youth, Muslim um, leadership is coming together and they're understanding, yes, we have to be part of the system. They're engaging more with other groups, which is the greatest thing. I mean, that is something that's what we need, and we are doing it. But back at home, whether it's Pakistan or other countries, they need to figure out how to engage also to other countries. Mm. Not just America, but to other countries. We need to engage that ma manner in that aspect. Yes. And the world's getting smaller. Mm. It's going to be, you know, we need to make sure we're engaged all across the borders. Yes. Is there anything else, any message? Would you like to give to our Muslim youth or to the world? The message to our Muslim youth is, just remember, if you are true to the religion of Islam, you cannot hurt one other human. If you hurt that human, it's as if you have hurt humanity. And it's not about you're going to go to Jannat. You are not. Don't ever think that. God never said, Allah ne kabhi nahi ye kaha. That's the biggest message I can give to them. And never, never stop gaining education. Always learn. Every day, every time. Always learn. Thank you so much, sir. Well, thank, thank you, you so thank much. You, thank you.